Hey everyone, uh, my name is James Niehaus, and today I'm going to walk through some advanced use cases for multi-step interactive forms, specifically where it can help you with ABM and personalization on your website. Um, this is actually a, a part two to an initial video I did around introducing everyone to interactive forms, why we love them so much, why they're pretty effective for our clients, and how you can get started with them as well. So this is kind of part two of that series. Um, and for those who don't know Funnel1B, we are both a platform and an agency that provides um, strategy and, and, and services for demand gen marketers to help them grow their website revenues. All right, let's jump right into it. So what we'll cover here quickly is a quick recap of you know, what interactive forms are. You'll see an example on the right, why they work so well and the results we see. And then we'll talk about you know, why it's actually a pretty ideal platform for you know, supporting your programs and ABM personalization and really five techniques that will help you enhance those programs with multi-step forms. All right, and like I mentioned, um, the video is on our blog, the original introduction to multi-step forms is on our blog, so if you wanna check that out as a kind of refresher, um, please do. And then, you know, for those who didn't, here's a quick, quick, fast recap for maybe one minute. Um, first, you know, what they are. Um, all we're doing here is taking your longer static, interact, um, static forms on your website, breaking them up into steps, uh, making them interactive and leading with intent questions that get them to raise their hand and express who they are and what they want to do. So this is converted really well for our clients. Um, as you see here, these are some examples of actual lists we've seen with form conversions on forms like get started and talk to sales and get demoed. So meaningful results, we're happy to say, and we think we're just getting started. And this video is about some of those more advanced use cases. And lastly, before we jump into those, um, just a quick recap of why we think it works well and what some best practices are. Um, so always lead with intent questions if possible. So what's in it for them? You know, who they are, what they're looking for, as opposed to starting with, you know, what's your first and last name, your email, or your phone number, right? We want to make them, we make it easy for them to get started and engage. Um, secondly, we want to um, ask a couple of those intent questions initially before we show them the rest of the form. Because we want them to, you know, one, commit, you know, get some yes, easy answers out of the way, and get momentum towards completing their task. So we found that this is definitely a, a sweet spot to kind of maximize conversions on, on a multi-step experience. And then lastly, it just really has a, a set proper expectations, how many steps are involved and what happens after you submit the form, just so you, they have the right context about time and, and what's gonna happen next. All makes sense, hopefully? If so, let's jump right into um, why multi-step forms are ideal for targeting and segmentation. Hopefully it's pretty obvious, but you know, in these experiences, in those first couple of questions where we ask for either you know profile or intent questions, um, we're getting valuable information um, that they want to share to per better you know customize their experience or get better information from us. So we want to use the information to provide one them a better experience, but also ideally personalize based on who they are and their company. So that, that's what ABM and personalization is all about. You know, personalizing based on who they are and the company that they're from, based on what you know about them and based on what you hopefully want to achieve with them in partnership. So some ideas could be, at a minimum, you know, users use their answers to better assign them segments for analytics and campaigns. That seems pretty obvious. More importantly, use those answers to personalize the rest of that form experience. So as they provide you information, provide them feedback that you, know, you, you can support their needs you can, help, you can provide specific information about their product interest, but use that moment to actually provide reinforcement for what they're looking for. Um, also, you can actually potentially use that information to route them to a different funnel or experience. So the whole idea is that not everyone should be treated the same. Your higher value prospects may be given a, a shortcut to talk with sales. Maybe the less valuable users may be given more of the self-service route, but use their answers and their profile to, 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 to route them in the, the most appropriate place to maximize you know your limited resources but also provide them the more appropriate experience next up we can target and personalize not just in that moment but also in future sessions and other channels we don't have to stop at the form so that's by information we know about them use it wherever wherever and whenever you see them again and then lastly um, target um, you know, over time, you actually can create different questions based on their profile. So if you have certain key um, segments that come to your site, 
you could potentially target them ahead of time and actually serve them a different, different actual form experience. Um, a little more advanced, but again, as you commit into the strategy, you'll see more and more ways to use it to your advantage. So jumping into each of these, um, first up, use their answers to segment them better. So the idea here is um, when you ask for intent questions, what you want to do is ask for questions that ideally help them better identify who they are and what they want to do. Now that's important information to both analyze as well as target based on because you want to be able to understand who they are and what they want to do. So oftentimes this information we don't know until they actually raise their hand. So it's important, you know, at a minimum, you collect this information in the forms you, you capture. But ideally, you're pushing this in your, your analytics to, to kind of segment and, and analyze. You're pushing them into your, you know, your other reporting um, revenue um, systems to actually understand, based on these factors, you know, how they actually be behave and convert on your site and for your business. So at a minimum, co collect the information and save it and pass it to the systems that, you, that would benefit from knowing that information. That's to us foundational and very minimum. Um, next up, um, what gets a little more interesting is actually using these answers to um, personalize the rest of the actual form experience. So, you know, if they express certain product interests or indicate, you know, they're from a small or enterprise, you want to reinforce that you're the right business for them. That here are the benefits of that product or maybe here are the, the reasons why you're great for, the, for SMB or enterprise or for this industry or for this type of role, um, you know. Um, technical or maybe marketing focused. Um, on the right, you see an example, a very simple example, where on a contact us form, we just simply ask for their product interest on step one, and we then personalize the rest of the form based on that answer. So this is where you can use that information in the moment to reinforce the benefits of, of your business, your offering, your expertise, in a way that's gonna reinforce, you know, based on who they are and what their intent is. We've done this with a couple of clients, and we've seen, you know, pretty nice positive upticks and conversion rates um, from this, this simple concept, right? It makes sense. What's even more compelling and potentially more exciting is the idea that we actually change the experiences based on who they are and what company they're from. Um, now, you know, rather than have, simply have one form for everyone, the idea here is that we take their answers or their inputs and based on our business strategy, we may serve them a different, you know, next step. So on the example on the right, you see here, based on the email and company domain, um, based on whether that matches a target account or not, they either can skip the form and go right to the scheduler, or if they're maybe not a target account, they would get a regular traditional form. So the idea here is we want to kind of provide that white glove service for top accounts, for top client prospects. Um, the opposite may also be true, where again, if they're not a, an ideal um, prospect, you might want to give them a longer form. But if they're more ideally, you know, your ideal target ICPs, maybe you skip the form, shorten the form, change the questions, trigger maybe a, a chat or, or, or a drift bot. For another client, you know, a thousand or more employees is the key question sales needs to know to decide whether they're right fit for their product. So ask that question up front, and based on that, skip the line, have them talk to sales directly or not. Those are just one of potentially many applications of using that information in the moment to serve a different next step experience. Did it make sense? All right, um, next up, um, targeting in return sessions and other channels. The idea here is don't let go of the information after they complete that form. What you wanna do is repeat that um, message, reinforce that, that information in follow-up interactions, whether it be a return session to the site whether it be uh, another channel like email or display, retargeting perhaps. Um, but the whole idea here is you're getting valuable information in the moment from an engaged user. Use it for your advantage. Okay, so that would mean, you know, if, it's, if they express certain, you know, product interests. When they come back, maybe that homepage hero changes to show that product, show that category affinity type technique, or based on their role, reinforce the use cases for their role, or based on the industry, show again, case studies for their industry, for their size, or many other ideas. An example on the right you see here, we're, we're targeting the homepage hero based on the different stages they're in that we identify in the, in the process. So um, again, the whole point here, you wanna personalize the experience over time and make it easy for them to continue and engage uh, on this and future sessions. And then lastly, um, the idea here is, you know, over time as you refine their strategy, you, you, this will become its own strategy. So much like you have with, say, you know, your 
Marketo email programs. You have different nurture sequences. Or in Drift, you may have different Drift playbooks. The idea here is over time, you'll recognize that you have certain key target accounts, segments, and ICPs that you'll want to route through different form experiences. So rather than having one interactive form for everyone, you may eventually end up where you have different forms for your top segments and groups. So, you know, I don't recommend doing this day one, but as you evolve the strategy, as you see what works or doesn't work, you're going to see natural segments that perform better or might need a little more guidance or hand-holding. This is where the strategy, you know, once it starts, you know, getting those double-digit improvements, these are natural ways to further enhance and refine the program. And again, this is going to only you know, make your personalization and ABM programs more targeted because you're targeting based on those same attributes that you care about and you want to personalize for. Make sense? Um, hopefully it does. Um, so the quick takeaways here. You know, if you haven't figured it out yet, we love multi-step forms. We think it's a great conversion tactic, and we recommend you doing this, do this on your site you know, today. Uh, but we think it works even better, as you've hopefully seen here, when you combine it with your ABM personalization strategies. Right? We're collecting valuable information that's going to be useful to target and personalize that user both for content as well as for campaigns. And then lastly, um, five ways to get started. So again, at a minimum, segment by the answers they provide you. Ideally, customize the form or the form flow based on those answers for better conversion rate and better experiences. Again, don't leave it just to the form experience. Target them in the future based on return sessions or another channels. And then lastly, as you get more advanced and more mature in this strategy, start building different forms for your top use cases or top segments. Make sense? Awesome. Um, so with that said, um, if you like this video and you want to um, see other videos on, on this or other topics, please visit our blog and um, you'll be able to you know, see videos and other content from myself and the rest of the team. And then lastly, if you have any final questions, you know, feel free to drop me an email or visit our website to kind of you know, experience our own interactive quiz and, and see if you're a good fit to work with us on a future project or engagement. With that, thank you for your time and goodbye.